Hello and welcome to Vibe Tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to integrate Firebase with your site. So first up, why we are using Firebase. Now there are a lot of real-time services available. So the Firebase provides a platform for real-time communication. So while in standard WordPress, a user opens the site by requesting it, makes a hit to the web server to load the page. So this comes with a limitation that when two pages are open on the site, they, do, they cannot communicate with each other in real time basis. For example, when the instructor adds the student to a particular course, she does not see on her screen that she has been added to the course unless and until she makes a reload. So this limitation of WordPress is removed by Firebase. Furthermore, Firebase comes with many abilities like like integrated logins with different social networks like Facebook, Google, and the phone authentication is also inbuilt. So let's see how this all works in, in Vibe platforms, in WPLMS and Vibe platforms. So here we are using the WPLMS site and we go to YPP settings. And here in the, in the first screen, we get the Firebase project settings. So let's see how we configure this. For this, we need to go to the site called firebase.google.com. Firebase and if you do not see a screen like this, then you'll need to create an account in Google to land on a screen like this. And we are going to create a new project. So we can create a project for this as test Firebase. Continue. And you can disable the Firebase, the Google Analytics. So very important point to note is that we are only using Firebase for transitional data, which means when a data is transferred from site A to site B, we are not using Firebase for storing data or, or authenticating users. So you can simply clean up the Firebase again and then and start using it again. There's no dependence of WPLMS on the Firebase, WPLMS or Y projects on the Firebase. So we're going to create this project. So once the project is ready, we'll see a screen like this. Now here we will need to go to the real time database. And we are going to create the database and you can select any here, but we recommend using the US central and you can start in locked mode because we will be changing the rules once the database is created. So here our database has been created. We go to the rules and we change the rules to auth not equals to null, which means that only a authenticated user is able to read and write. Now you get the notification here that any authenticated user can steal, but since we are overwriting the data again and again on Firebase, there's and it is uh, the transitional data. We'll also see what all data is being transferred and why, why we can simply ignore this notification. So next up, we go to the project overview and here we have this. So there are no apps, so which means we need to create one for the web. So this icon here is for the web app and we can name this web app as anything. Test Firebase and we're going to register the app. So here you can see we get the Firebase config and the very important, we get the database URL in the Firebase config. So we copy this. If anything goes missing, then we'll need to re reset this. So we can copy this later on. So it is always available for copying in, down here. 
So first we'll need to configure the logins as well. For that we go to the project uh, build authentication. And since Firebase can only be accessed by authenticated users, this is a mandatory step. So we need to activate email and we can activate Google. Right. And we can activate Facebook and other others. We'll come back to it later on. And this is the SMS authentication, which is also available. Next, we go to the settings and in the authorized domains. Here you need to add the domain. So in our case, it is support.wplms.io so this has been added as the authorized domain and now let's head back to the project overview and in the project settings here we copy this firebase configuration and we are going to paste it in the Firebase config. Then we need the Firebase private key. So the private key needs to be generated so that so that our WordPress site is able to communicate with the Firebase from the server. So here we are going to generate a new private key and it downloads a JSON. So we open this and you can see this private key. We again copy this private key. We copy this private key and paste it here. Then we need the web API key which, which we get from the general section and this is the web API key. We paste. Then we need the Firebase UID. Now this is a very important ID. So right now there is no ID here. So we can add a user. You can add any user here. This this um, user will be the will, will be sort of the administrator for the for this particular Firebase project because the server the WordPress site is going to communicate with the Firebase using this particular user. So we can add this and this creates a UID. We copy this UID and paste it here. Then last we have the Firebase service email, which in the service accounts, you can capture this, capture this service email. And that's it. So this is done and we are going to enable Google login and also see how the simultaneous login works. So we are going to log the user out when a, when when he attempts to re-log in. So the all the previous sessions will be cleared. So this is now our support site and you can see we get the option to sign in with Google and when you click on it, you can see it is asking for a Google login. So we're not going to use that. We're going to use the standard sign in and we just use our account, which is student at the student.com and the password is student. So here we can see that the student is now logged in. And when we see our Firebase, so in authentication users, you'll see that we have a new user, which is student and it is signed in. So Firebase keeps track of which all users sign in in real time basis. So now let's just test this. So we're going to. So here you can see that it logged out after some time. 
let's test this again. So we log in to browser one. And now as soon as we log in, you can see this logs out. Now next let's test the Google login. So we log out and now let's test. So here we log, logged in from Google account and when we go to the user section here, you can see that the new email ID is registered and the UID has been generated. So that's all from the WPLMS tutorials.